Here, author, fly tire, and blogger Matt Grobert is going to tie the venerable rusty rat Atlantic salmon fly. It's a great fly for learning a number of techniques used over a wide range of classic salmon and steelhead patterns. For a hook, Matt uses a Dairiki number 899 in size 6. After securing the hook firmly in the jaws of his tying vise, Matt loads a bobbin with a spool of red 60 Danville Flymaster. Start your thread on the hook shank halfway between the back edge of the eye and the end of the return. Begin taking wraps rearward until your thread is beyond the end of the return and around just the hook shank. Make a few wraps, then snip the excess tag off close. Give your bobbin a counterclockwise spin to uncord and flatten the thread. Then, make open spiral wraps until your thread is located directly above the hook point. For this size 6 hook, small, oval, gold French tinsel works well for the tag. Snip a 10 inch or so length free from the spool. You won't use all of this length, but it's far easier to work with than a piece that's too short. Once again, give your bobbin a counterclockwise spin to flatten the thread, and then place the very end of the tinsel on the underside of the hook shank right at the tie-in point. Secure it there with a few touching wraps rearward. The whole idea here is to keep any tie-in lump or bump out of view underneath the hook shank. Next, give your bobbin a counterclockwise spin to flatten the thread again. Then take touching wraps with it right up to the bound down end of the tinsel. Relocating your thread to the front of the hook at this point will help to keep it out of the way. Start making nice, even touching wraps with the tinsel over top of the thread wraps. If you need to, compress the tinsel wraps with your thumbnail so all of them are touching. When you're satisfied with how the tag looks, unwind your tying thread back to behind the remaining length of tinsel and use it to once again secure the tinsel out of sight on the underside of the hook shank. Use open spiral thread wraps to continue securing the tinsel to the shank all the way up to the start of the hook return. Next, relocate your tying thread rearward, occasionally giving the bobbin a counterclockwise spin to flatten the thread as you go. Use the thread to build up a narrow collar in front of the tag. It should be slightly shorter in height than the tag wraps behind it. Four or five peacock swords are used to form the tail of the fly. Try to keep the tips even as you snip the swords free from the stem. Relocate the swords to your right hand so they're curving upward. Maintaining this orientation, place them on top of the hook shank at the tie-in point and re-grab them with the fingertips of your left hand. Secure the swords to the top of the hook shank, adjusting them as necessary in the process. When you're happy with the look, take open spiral wraps of tying thread forward over the sword butts, all the while keeping them directly on top of the hook shank. Continue wrapping up and over the back end of the hook return. There, spin your bobbin counterclockwise to again flatten the thread. We're going to stop here for just a second. As you may have guessed, how you tie in and bind down different materials greatly influences the final look of an Atlantic salmon fly. Most of it helps to ensure a nice even body shape and keep proportions correct. In many ways, these small procedures are an art form unto themselves. Okay, moving on. Pull the free length of tinsel rearward along the underside of the hook shank and secure it there with wraps of tying thread going toward the tail. The flatter you can keep your tying thread throughout the process, the better. Continue taking wraps all the way back to the base of the tail. Then, advance your thread forward with touching wraps to help even out what will be the underbody of the fly. Leave your tying thread a short distance behind the end of the hook return. The actual body of the fly is created using rusty orange unifloss. Here, Matt's loaded a spool onto a bobbin, but you can also use a long cut length if you prefer. Either way, lay the end of the floss against the near side of the hook and take a single thread wrap to lightly secure it. Pull the floss gently rearward until only its bitter end protrudes from underneath the wrap. Now advance your tying thread forward, ending with it up on the hook return. Start making touching, even wraps with the floss rearward, 
trying to keep it as flat as possible as you go. A gentle counterclockwise twist of the bobbin every so often will help to do this. When you reach the base of the tail, make sure every last bit of red thread underneath has been covered. Then, change direction so you're wrapping forward with the floss. If you're using a bobbin, it's very common for the material to floss out like this, but it isn't nearly as bad a problem as it looks if you're still able to keep the floss body smooth and even in height. Once you have good floss coverage, up to a point about one third of the way down the hook shank from the back edge of the eye, secure the floss with tight wraps of tying thread, but don't clip the excess floss off. With your tying thread right at the front end of the yellow body, lift the floss up to vertical and use wraps of tying thread to bind it down. Again, think smooth underbody as you make these wraps. This segment of floss will form the fly's underwing. The front part of the body is created using two strands of peacock curl. Tie in the strands on the near side of the hook and then take thread wraps forward to about an eye length behind the hook eye. Make touching wraps with the peacock curl forward toward your tying thread. When you reach the thread, use it to secure the tip ends of the hurl to the near side of the hook shank. You can then snip or break the excess tips off close. Return your tying thread back to the front edge of the peacock curl. Pull the floss forward and bind it down with a single thread wrap to keep it out of the way as you begin making evenly spaced open spiral wraps with the oval tinsel over top of the floss body. When you reach the back edge of the hurl, undo that wrap of tying thread to free the floss underwing. Continue making spiral wraps through the hurl part of the body, finally securing the tinsel to the underside of the hook with wraps of tying thread. You can then reach in with your tying scissors and snip the excess tinsel off close. Now's a good time to trim the underwing to length. It should be just a tad shorter than the very tips of the peacock sword tail. The wing of the fly is made using guard hairs from a red fox. Matt likes the hair from the center of the back and toward the hind end. After snipping a small clump free from the hide, get hold of the guard hairs with the fingertips of your left hand and strip out the under fur with your right. Lightly wetting your fingertips will help to pull pretty much all the under fur out at once. If done correctly, the tips of the guard hairs should be fairly even, but it's always a good idea to drop them tips first into a hair stacker and give them a thorough stacking. If you find that after you remove the hair from the stacker, there are a few hairs that are not aligned, just pull them out and discard them. Measure the hair to form a wing that extends to the back edge of the hook bend. This time, give your tying thread a clockwise twist, which will cord it up, give it some strength, and a little extra bite to get the somewhat slippery guard hairs firmly tied in. Matt adds a complete wrap around only the guard hairs, not the hook shank. It's a nice touch that both bundles the hair together and helps keep the clump pointed at an upward angle. Continue taking thread wraps to the front edge of the peacock curl and then forward just a bit. A single feather from a grizzly dry fly neck is used to hackle the fly. Matt prefers the ones with a good bit of web and fairly soft fibers out by the edge of the neck. Do strip off the lower fuzzier fibers that tend to have misaligned tips. When you get into nice even length fibers, pull down a half inch or so on both sides of the stem to isolate the tip of the feather so you're able to snip it off and form a small triangular tie-in anchor. Now give your bobbin a counterclockwise spin to uncord the thread, which will make it want to jump slightly rearward for the first wrap and catch the bare stem behind the tie-in anchor. As you secure the feather to the near side of the hook, do your best to create a nicely tapered ramp down to the bare hook shank. A smooth ramp will really help when you go to wrap the hackle. Leave your tying thread at about this location behind the hook eye. Get hold of the butt end of the stem with hackle pliers, wet your fingertips, and begin folding the hackle fibers rearward. 
Continue folding and preening the fibers back as you make touching wraps with the hackle feather to build up a fairly dense hackle collar that completely covers the red thread wraps beneath. Three full turns is usually enough. When you get to bare stem, secure it with wraps of tying thread. You can then reach in with the tips of your tying scissors and snip the excess off close. Take wraps of tying thread all the way down to bare hook. Then pick up your whip finish tool and do a long whip finish with touching wraps going progressively rearward all the way to the hackle collar. Finally, snip or cut your tying thread free. Although not exactly traditional, UV Cure Resin makes it easy to build up an attractive glossy head on the fly in fairly short order. Really try to get all the thread wraps completely covered while at the same time not letting any resin run up the hackle fibers. You also want to try to keep the amount of material used to a minimum. When you're happy with how the head of the fly looks, give it an ample shot with the UV torch to set the resin. Salmon flies, like the rusty rat, take a good deal of practice to master, but are well worth the time and effort. Don't expect results like this on your first attempt. Instead, focus on the small details, tie a whole bunch, and know you will eventually get there.